last time on Sailing Tillaroo. Goodbye, Curacao. Morning, babe. Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready to cast these lines? I'm ready. Let's do it. days in Curacao getting everything ready, the day finally came. It was time to cast off the lines and head out to sea. As we left the beautiful island of Curacao behind, the feeling of finally being at sea in our very own sailboat was heart-stirring and truly awe-inspiring. The strength and stability of our magnificent Nayad as it plowed its way through the churned up Caribbean waters was absolutely stunning. Amber and I couldn't be more enamored with our great life adventure we have chosen of sailing around the world. It has been said 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. the freedom, the open, salty air, the adventure, the natural rock and roll rhythm of the waves stirs the heart and inspires the imagination. Curacao Resort. 
great marina, well protected on the leeward side of Curacao. We left there Sunday morning and we went around the leeward side of the island to the east and then we made the turn on the east side of Curacao between Curacao and Bonaire and headed north towards uh, Puerto Rico across the Caribbean Sea. As we were leaving the marina, working our way around the leeward side, the seas were extremely strong. Some really high gnarly winds and very high waves. So we pounded through all of that with the motor on. Then as we made our turn to the north, in between Curacao and Bonaire, we put out the sails. So we've been sailing mainly with a Genoa reefed and our main sail reefed as well. A little on the conservative side on purpose so that in the event we catch squalls, we're not scrambling to try to make adjustments uh, at breakneck speed. It's hard to describe or put into words exactly how strong and stable this Nayon boat is. But no matter how strong the ocean waves are, and no matter how confused they may seem at times, this awesome strong Nayon just claws its way through whatever the ocean throws at it to maintain stability and track straight and true. the Caribbean Sea, our adventure had truly begun. We settled in and adjusted to life off-grid at sea, cooking cowboy skillet meals of beans, rice, and sausages. Life at sea is living in its purest and simplest form, and there's no other place we would rather be. Watching the rolling waves and the dolphins, nature's little playful wonders of the ocean is truly mesmerizing. Jacques Cousteau once said, the sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonder forever. Here we are coming to the end of day three of our passage from Curacao to Puerto Rico. Started out this morning very good. We had good sailing conditions and then the wind died out on us. We had full main sail and full Genoa out and we just weren't getting anywhere with the light wind conditions. We were doing one and a half to two knots sailing. And since we really need to get Puerto Rico, make our pit stop there, and then get on to Miami. We decided to motor sail, so we have out just a little sliver of mainsail. Jenna was all fully burled, rolled in, and we're motoring along at a smooth, easy 1500 RPM on the Volvo Penta diesel engine. We're averaging about five, five and a half knots, uh, slow but sure. We're getting there and conserving fuel while we're doing it. We're getting ready for the night shift, so. I'm about to go down. I like to check the bilge area uh, before nightfall. I check it in the morning and at night to make sure we don't have any water coming in from any unknown places. So I check the bilge. Uh, we get our nav lights turned on up on top of the mast. I check all the hatches, make sure all the latches are down, make sure nothing has popped open during the day of motoring and sailing, and get everything ready for the evening.
All right, good morning, y'all. Here we are, the morning of day four on our Caribbean Sea Passage from Curacao to Puerto Rico. We motor sailed last night due to light winds. We're still motor sailing on into Marina Puerto Real, which was recently renamed to Marina Puerto Real. It was previously Marina Pescaderas in Puerto Rico on the south west side of the island of Puerto Rico. We can now see land ahead of us. We can see the outline of Puerto Rico and we are just about three hours off, out from the marina. So we're excited. It's been a surreal experience uh, being out here at sea for three full days with no land in sight. Uh, we did see a couple of boats on our way up this way. Early this morning we saw a vessel uh, underway crossing our path on the AIS and it appeared that they were getting uh, close to crossing our path at the same time we were going to meet them at the crossing point. So it definitely got my attention on the early morning watch. It turned out to be the Echo Joshua Park, which is a very large uh, tanker cargo rig, and it is a 600 feet long vessel. So huge vessel. Uh, they passed within three nautical miles to the north of us and crossed our path directly. As a precaution, even though we had uh, that vessel on AIS, I did, uh, as a courtesy, reach out because obviously it was pitch dark. I did reach out to the Echo Joshua Park on the VHF radio, advised them uh, that we were sailing northbound to Puerto Rico and that we did have them in sight visually as well on the AIS. And the captain of the Echo Joshua Park responded with a very polite and courteous good morning and also advised that he had us inside as well and on his radar. It was just a good safety measure to avoid any potential collision out in the middle of the, the night. So all was good. They passed in front of us. We went behind them and carried on our way northbound to Puerto Rico. It's been interesting. It's been a great experience and we'll keep you updated on the next leg as we get to Puerto Rico. <laughs> After three and a half days on the open water, we began to see outer buoy markers and began preparing for our approach into Puerto Real, Puerto Rico. The marina advised we would be on a starboard tie at the dock, so Amber got the fender situated and tied to starboard. Puerto Rico. I don't know, maybe we got here like an hour ago. Sean pulled the boat up to the fueling dock. I don't know if you can see. He tries to speak to the people here and nobody speaks English. He's like, okay, I gotta talk to somebody in English because we're learning Spanish. He goes to the marina office and it's locked and nobody's there. So he comes back, he calls customs, which I will have him explain. We ended up being able to fuel up. So I'm sitting here at the fuel station. Sean is going back to the marina office so that we can get uh, our slip because we are docking at a slip in order to go run some errands and provision, get water. I actually see Sean walking back now. Here comes the sun. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so they were in the marina office now, yay. He said that our slip for the night is going to be here at this fuel dock. They just want us to pull all the way forward to the end of the dock. After getting all 
all checked in, the marina let us borrow their golf cart for the short drive to the market so we could get some provisions for the next leg of our passage. It was really cool riding a golf cart down the streets of this small, quaint fishing village. We shopped at Supermercado Plaza del Porto and loaded the golf cart down with provisions and headed back to the marina. <laughs> filters out as we prepared to get some water. and filter setup connected, we refilled our fresh water tank, which holds 265 gallons on board. Hey babe, did you get it all filled up? Got the water tank all full now. I'm just getting the pressure out of this expand the hose so we can put it back in the uh, storage locker and get on with the rest of the program for the evening. Are you as hungry as me? I'm a little bit hungry. We're gonna go find some good local food and uh, see how it tastes. Let's do it, baby. Hey, y'all. So, give you an update on the Customs and Border Patrol check in process in Puerto Real, Puerto Rico. So, we arrived at the Marina Puerto Real, which is the new name. It was previously uh, Marina Pescaderas so that recently sold. And there are signs there at the Marina from Customs and Border Patrol directing you with a number to call. We call the number, they direct us to our CBP Rome app. They want to just make sure we have all the information correctly uploaded into the CBP Rome app which uh, includes all the information on the vessel as well as your passport information. Then you submit the information for check-in through the app and then the Customs and Border Patrol uh, officers, which are actually in San Juan, which is on the other side of Puerto Rico Island from Puerto Real. Puerto Real is on the southwest side of Puerto Rico and San Juan is on the northeast side. So my car is about a two hour drive from San Juan to Puerto Real. So it's great and very convenient that they allow you to do the remote check-in there. Once you submit everything through the app, then the CBP officers actually give you a call via video chat and they verify that uh, you are who you say you are and they see you visually on video and of course match that information with your passport. And once they verify and talk to you visually through video chat on the CBP Rome app, they tell you to stand by that you will receive your clearance within a few minutes by email. Then you stand by for literally, I don't think we had to wait more than five or ten minutes. Within five minutes or so, we had the clearance by email. And then we were all set. We were cleared into the U.S. since Puerto Rico is obviously U.S. territory. Then we were able to roam about Puerto Real. We were able to go get a nice sit-down meal. Uh, at Don Eco, a nice local restaurant there, just a few steps down the street from the marina. So overall, it's a very good, seamless, remote check-in process there in Puerto Real. Next time on Sailing Tellaru. <laughs>